hello guys welcome to my youtube channel today we are going to talk about vtp vlan trunking protocol let's start uh, what is vtp vlan trunking protocol it is a cisco proprietary protocol it is used by all cisco switches the purpose of vtp is just to keep the track of vlan information it exchanges the vlan information we can administrate the vlan database by using vlan trunking protocol right and we use vtp in all cisco switches so we let's understand the vtp by using this topology so this topology has three switches right so what is the purpose of vtc uh, suppose if we have users in vlan 10 20 30 and we have we need to create all these three vlans in all the three switches so by using the vtp we just need to create the vlan in one switch and that will be propagated that will be replicated to all other switches that is possible by using vtp right another thing is just not about the addition of vlan that has to be replicated to all the switches but yes we can delete the vlan as well from one switch will be replicated to all the switches so there are certain uh, terminologies certain technicality in which vtp has a capability to to do this right so there are some things with the configuration revision number so there are things by which it exchanges the information between the switches inform the switches that this vlan information has to be modified in that particular switches and this can happen you can see the caveat in in below of this slide that the vtp does not advertise information about which switch port are assigned to which vlan so it does not uh, it does not transfer the information regarding the switch port where the servers are connected where the switches are connected it just sends information about the vlan information and the name and the id and the configuration and the vtp version type so we will talk about in detail in our upcoming slides let's understand the benefits of vtp suppose we have a very large environment and we have almost 100 switches right so if we are not using vtp we need to configure the 100 switches with the vlan information manually and that gonna take a long time but if we keep the vtp on our switches if we configure the vtp on our switches then the vtp is responsible for keeping everything about the vlan and if we configure on one of the switches that will propagate the information about these vlans to other switches in the same network if we if we delete any vlan it will be replicated everywhere if we change anything in the vlan will be replicated to everywhere right see uh, i have also placed a caveat in the blue of the side in this slide as well vtp information is sent over trunk port whereas no vtp information is sent over access port we need the switches to be connected over the trunk port then only vtp we can use when we are going to configure the vtp we need to understand what is the vtp domain so there are certain things we need to configure uh, on the switches it can be the vtp domain it is a vtp password and we are several modes for the vtp we will talk about that so first let's understand what is vtp domain so vtp domain is a group of switches that shares the same vlan information so uh, that means only the switches within a same vtp domain can exchange the informations right if we receive any information other than the, the different vtp domain it will discard that packet it will not keep the information of that vlan because they have different vtp domains so this is very important to keep in mind that vtp domain has to be same for all the switches we have in the network we want them to replicate the vlan between them then we need to keep vtp domain same in all the switches we can see i have placed mismatch vtp domain names are a common cause for 
for the issue that why we are not able to create VLANs, why this is not getting duplicated to other switches. So that happens if the VTP domain mismatching between the switches, right? Now let's talk about VTP modes of operation. So in the VTP, we have three different modes of operation. So it works as a server, it works as a client, and it can also work in a transport in a transparent mode, right? Let's start with the server mode. So as I said that if we are changing anything on the one switch will be replicated to all the switches so that if we talk about that switch where we need to make that change that is the we when the switch is configured in the server mode that is responsible for creating for deleting for making changing change making changes in the vlan that will be handled by when the switch is configured in a server mode right this is a default mode on all the switches the switch in VTP server is needed to propagate the VLAN information throughout the VTP domain. Also, the switch in the VTP server mode able to create, modify, delete VLANs. VTP information should be changed on the switch operating in server mode. And any change made to the switch in the server mode will be propagated through the VTP domain via VTP advertisement forwarded on the trunk. Also, VTP VLAN in, in uh, configuration are saved in NVRAM for switches in VTP server mode. So that means we can save the information about the VTP in the NVRAM, right? Uh, this is a default mode in this all Cisco switches. We can create, delete, modify VLANs in the server mode of VTP informations. And uh, last but not the least, one more thing it was here any changes made in the switch in the server mode will be replicated through the vtp to all the switches right so this is only the uh, way that we can modify we can make the changes in the vlan when it is in server mode and the, we have a caveat over here vlan trunking protocol somewhat confusing named since it does not provide vlan trunking capability remember vtp is not used for trunking protocols such as it 2.1q and isl enable trunking so that's right is like the name given to the vtp vlan trunking protocol doesn't mean anything related to the trunking we can do anything with the configuration of the trunking for ports and between the switches it's just a name given to the uh, this vtp that's it all right when we talk about the client mode so client on the contrast of uh, uh, that server mode the client mode is not capable of creating deleting adding uh, like any of the it can not do anything with the VLANs what it does it just receives information from the server switches and update its database right so VTP client does not store the VLAN information received from the VTP server in the NVRAM so VTP client does not store any information about the VTP server in VLAN. So that means if we power of the switches, if we loses the power of switches, reloaded the switch, then the VLAN information will be lost in that case. Then again, it ha it has to learn from the relearn from the VTP server, right? Client mode will just learn and pass along VTP information. So it's just learn the information from the server and pass it to its peers right so this is a second mode of operation we have in vtp now the third one last but not the least transparent mode it is a very smart mode of operation in vtp we can say that because in the if the switch is configured in the vtp trans transparent mode so what it does it does not participate in the vtp although Although we we keep this this mode this switch in the same VTP domain, it just receives and forward the information over the over the trunk port to other switches. It does not like it does not uh, update its VLAN database, right? It can create, it can modify, it can delete VLANs on its own. It keeps its own database. It does not forward any information its information own information to the other switches nor it updates other 
VLAN information to its database. It is completely isolated. It just receives the VTP advertisement and forward it to the other switches in the same VTP domain. It, it, if we talk about practically, it does not participate in the VTP uh, operations, right? Now let's talk about VTP advertisements. So VTP advertisement is nothing. These are the packets helps in exchanging the information between the switches, right? There is nothing uh, special in that. Like in the BGP, we have BGP update message in OSPF, we have OSPF update message. In the similar way, whenever we are exchanging the information between the switches uh, regarding the VTP database, VLAN database, then the VTP advertisement come into the picture, right? So VTP switches using an index number called VTP configuration revision number to keep track of the most recent VLAN changes. Uh, you know, in the entire v VTP, this is one of the most important thing, VTP configuration revision number. This is only the number responsible for, for you know, identifying where we need to make the changes, uh, where it is going to update and uh, like the database. And this can also bring down your network down. I will talk about this later, right? So <clears throat> VTP advertisement is just exchanging the information uh, using the uh, VTP message type. I will discuss in detail in the upcoming slides what are these messages we use for that. So uh, VTP header includes like uh, uh, the few information about the VTP like it includes the VTP version number. So we have three type of versions in the VTP one, two, three. By default like uh, uh, the VTP always uh, version one uh, in the Cisco old switches, in the Catalyst switches, we have version 1 and 2. But uh, the Nexus switches and NXOX switches, we are coming up with the version 3 as well. It has enhanced capability in the VTP when we talk about VTP version 3. <coughs> it also includes the message data type, the data, <coughs> the, the kind of information, the data we have in that message. So the second field in the VTP header is the message type. The third field in the VTP header would be the VLAN, uh, like the VLAN ID. What is the VLAN ID? Uh, that is that it has. The fourth, uh, the fourth field will be the uh, configuration division number. The configuration is a minimum. I told you the significance of it. It plays a very important role when it, we talk about the VTP. And uh, the uh, fifth one is the VTP name length. So VTP name length means the uh, the name uh, we have of the VLAN, so it also keeps that record, right? So it is uh, it is very important to always force any newly added network switches to have a revision number zero before being attached to the network. You know why? As I told you that the configuration revision number plays a very important role. Yes, it plays a very important role. You know what happens if it is not zero? Suppose we you have two uh, two switches which is which are in server mode, right? By default, as I told you that the switches are in server mode. So if we have two switches and they have the conf uh, configuration revision number, it's uh, five, and we are adding new switch which has a configuration number seven. New switch will also be in server mode. Server mode has a capability to make changes about the VLAN in the entire VTP environment. Right. So when we are attaching that third switch, which has a configuration number seven, what will happen? It will compare like it will send the advertisement VTP advertisement to the other switches. So the suppose it is a switch two and the one. And once they receive the VTP advertisement from the, uh, the third switch, it will compare its configuration revision number. It will think there are some changes in the environment made by my peer. So it will compare its configuration number because it is lower than the newly added switch of configuration number. So it will compare it. It will find that it is lower. It will update its database. 
so what will happen it can bring the network down because the new switch is 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 has not it's not empty it already has vlan database in it the configuration number is higher than the already existing environment so all the switches in the environment will update their database their vlan database from the already edit uh, already edit switch newly added switch so that can bring the problem to us right so that's why we need to make sure whenever anytime we are adding new switch it should has a revision number zero right <coughs> second thing the vtp password so vtp password is necessary to be identical right everywhere so that it once they will authenticate so it can authenticate with the password and should be same in the all switches in the VTP environment. If a password is configured for VTP, it must be configured on all the switches in the VTP domain. Password is case sensitive and must be same on all the switches in the VTP management domain. VTP password gets converted into 16 bytes value by MD5 hashing algorithm and is carried in all summary advertisement VTP packets. We will talk about these VTP packets, VTP exchange messages in my next slide. Please keep in mind that the VTP domain name and the password are both case sensitive. That means we need to make sure it is completely identical in terms of, case, in terms of its case and everything for all the switches. Then it can participate in the VTP. So VTP message types. So VTP message types are uh, responsible for exchanging the information between the switches, between the server and the client mode, between the all the three the three modes. They are responsible for exchanging the informations in terms of these three packets. So there are three types of uh, message types: the summary advertisement, subset advertisement advertisement request so let's start by the summary advertisement by default all the cisco switches sends the summary advertisement at the five five minutes of interval right so they sends every packet in every five minutes summary routes is responsible when we add when we delete when we modify any of the cisco switch in the server mode server mode inc made increment in the configuration revision number and then it issues the summary advertisement to its peers to the client side right so so summary advertisement inform its adjacent switches of the current vtp domain name and the configuration number so when the switches receives the advertisement from the server they compares the vtp domain name with its own domain name if it is matches then we are good right if it does not then it discard the packet but if it is the same then again the switch compare its configuration revision number with with its own revision number and if it is higher the own revision number is higher or equal then the packet is ignored we we need not uh, need to update any vlan database anything on our side but if it is lower then the advertisement request is sent for updating the database second one is the subset advertisement subset as what advertisement is nothing it's just follow the summary advertisement it what what it what it does it just uh, and you know one or more several uh, like uh, subset advertisement to follow the summary uh, advertisement if there are any changes in the vlan right so it keeps the information about the vlan and if there are multiple there are several vlan changes then we may need the several sub subset advertisement which are following the summary advertisement so it's just a subset it's just the you know we can say uh, these are the small packets that are following the summary advertisement to update the database to to update the vlan information right last but not the least advertisement request 
so switch may need the VTP advertisement request when the switch has been reset the VTP domain name has been changed or the switch has been has received a VTP summary advertisement with a higher configuration number than its own right so once we receive advertisement request so it issue the summary advertisement to peer switches and we know uh, like one or more subsequent uh, uh, subset advertisement follow the summary advertisement so we can like uh, if uh, in a in a brief we can understand first it is always a advertisement request second it is a summary advertisement and third is a subset advertisement like if any changes made in the in the in the vtp environment the first message will be the advertisement request right second it will be having it will be about the information that these are the configuration these are the changes will compare everything will be happen through the summary advertisement and the information about the vlan will be done by the subset advertisement so this would be the hierarchy when we are exchanging information between the switches right so that's 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 all about the three types of messages we have in the vtp operation so now after understanding the vtp message type uh, so there are few things we need to know about the vtp so vtp we know the full range of vlans starts from 121094 we have normal range vlans we have 121005 and extended range of vlans starts from 1006 to 4094 right vtp propagates normal vlans only uh, propagates only on normal vlans a switch must be in transparent mode when we uh, when you create exchange range vlans so this is one of the most important thing you know we can use vtp when we are using normal range of vlans if we are using extended range of vlans then the vtp mode should be transparent it cannot work with the server or the client mode so this is a point we should keep in mind when we are using vtp right okay let's move on so we know that there is always a space for improvement and here we go vtp pruning is, is something which is which is there in the vtp for you know the proper utilization of uh, everything when we talk about vtp and when we talk about the switches so vtp pruning helps improve proper allocation and use of network bandwidth by reducing unnecessary flooded traffic such as broadcast traffic multicast traffic unknown and flooded unicast packet vtp pruning is disabled by default in cisco switches so now let's understand what they are saying about vtp pruning so we know like uh, in the in the you know in the fundamentals we know that if uh, any packet from the suppose if we have user here in the vlan 100 and it sends the packet then it will then all the switches who are in vlan 100 will receive that packet will be advertised to all the switches will receive to the from this end to the this end right and even if we don't have any user connected on vlan 100 suppose if we don't have any user in this switch if we don't have any user in this switch right so this is unnecessary flooding of packet where we don't need that packet in that switch if we don't have vlan 100 user in any of the switches why we, why would we need the packet to be received on that switch then we need to stop that flooding and that's how the vtp pruning comes into the picture it helps in stop in stopping the unnecessary flooding of packet which is not made for the particular that switch okay so if vlan 100 we have uh, 
broadcast is sent to all the switches in the VTP domain. By default, it is sent to the all, but with the help of VTP pruning, we can disable if we don't have any user assigned for VLAN 100 or any other desired VLAN. Right? If we don't have a user on this switch, we can disable the. So what it will do? It will. Uh, it will just. Uh, come into it and forward it it will not forward anything on its ports if you don't have any uh, user if you don't have any machine connected over VLAN 100 right it will just received and forward it will not forward to any of the port of the switch right so that's how VTP pruning works so it is you know by this you can see that uh, yes we can see the proper uh, you know allocation of the resources proper utilization of the resources and this we have uh, there is we need improvement in everything so vtp pruning should be enabled on vtp server all the clients in the vtp domain will automatically enable vtp pruning by default this vlan are pruning enabled so this is a normal range vlan but VLAN 1 cannot be pruned because it is administrative VLAN. Both VTP version in the 2 supports pruning. Okay. So that means VTP pruning is we can enable on only on the server side and it will automatically replicate to all the clients in the VTP domain. And we can implement the VTP pruning only on the normal range VLAN. Right. We cannot do anything with the VLAN 1. Right. We cannot prune this VLAN 1 because this is a management VLAN through which we configure our devices through which we cannot. The, this is a good thing that Cisco has done. At least they, they are not uh, stopping anything like uh, if they would have done included the VLAN 1 as well. And if by mistake someone has pruned that VLAN 1 so the packet would not be reaching on that switch and that can like a proper completely isolating the switch from the environment so they protected us thanks to cisco right we have caveats over here vtp client will move to the transparent mode if there is any failure during updating vlan database received from server oh nice following syslog message is displayed on console so this would be the message you would see when it would fail to update it vlan database then it will the client will move into the transparent mode and for fixing this for fixing this issue you need to roll back again to the vtp mode client to get the latest update from the server okay now we 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 talked about the vtp vtp version 1 vtp version 2 message types and vtp pruning so let's talk about something latest and this is VTP version 3. VTP version 3 is introduced, was introduced in NX OS 7.2 as a following features. As I told you, it, it supports all capability of version 1 and the version 2, but it has enhanced feature as compared to the version 1 and version 2. So first thing is that it, it has a function of primary server vtp primary server this is a good thing you know why uh, you remember we can have in the vtp version 1 and 2 multiple servers if we want we can do that right we can create multiple uh, uh, switches in the server mode and uh, whenever they are making any changes so it can replicate accordingly but uh, it is protecting us from that so how it is secured when we talk about we can configure vtp as a primary server you know any of this like if we configured suppose in an environment we have configured two servers right uh, two in a server mode so among the two we can make one as a primary server so the primary server can only will only be responsible for creating for adding for deleting vlans throughout the vtp environment so this is a good thing when we are talking about this primary server right second thing extended vlans in the vtp version in the vtp version 2 we we have seen that we can create it supports the vtp only in the normal range in the extended range the transparent mode is used but in this in the vtp version 3 
it supports extended VLAN as well. So it supports all the VLANs we have one starting from 1 to 904094, right? So it includes the extended VLAN as well. It supports the private VLAN, it supports a remote span VLAN, it supports the MST, authentication is improved. It, earlier it was uh, using the password and password configuration with the, which is encrypted which is encrypted by the hashing algorithm md5 right but here we are using the hidden and the secret password which is also which is also very secured way so this is enhanced feature about the authentication uh, you remember there were only the three modes we had in the vtp version one and the two it was client server in the transmit mode and the version 3 has introduced one more mode which is uh, uh, which is off mode right so so vtp off mode is very similar to the transparent mode except one thing what is that in the transparent mode we were like we it, it was receiving the vtp advertisement it was forwarding the vtp advertisement to the other switches that means it was somewhere participating in the VTP, right? It was either it was not exchanging the VLAN information, but yes, it was participating in forwarding the traffic VTP advertisement packet. But by keeping the switch in the off mode, we can stop that VTP advertisement. That means we are completely isolating the switch from the VTP domain right and when we talk about the compatibility yes it is compatible with all the features of uh, uh, version 1 and the version 2 and we have announcement features and we have discussed in the version 3 so being vtp server however it's not enough to make changes to the vlan database this is new so one of the switch has to be the primary server in order to create and modify or delete the vlan right so so VTP being in the VTP server is not enough in the version 3 it has is it has to be the primary server in order to make the changes right so these are the configuration commands we have uh, version 1 version 2 and VTP pruning there are slight difference in the VTP version 3 that VTP version 3 supports with the next an NXOS so the feature has to be enabled in the nexus switch and uh, then we can configure the vtp version 3 and it's just that we need to apply the command vtp primary when it is configured in the server mode it should be the primary server in that case and the vtp pruning so we can configure the vtp pruning by using this command now these are the commands you can pause the video you can note down these commands and we will be using these commands in our lab right these are the verification commands we have in the vtp this gives us the information about the device about the vlan about the counters interfaces so there are few commands that does not support in the vtp version 2 so this has to be on the NXOS like uh, the VTP interface command won't support there. Like uh, rest, I think that all other commands should work in the VTP version 1 and 2 also. So let's move to our lab. So that's all about the VTP, the theoretical part we have covered. Uh, we have covered the different flavors like we have uh, completed VTP pruning and message type advertisement modes so all right let's move on to our lab so now we are going to implement the vtp in this topology so we can see we have three departments that means three vlan over here hr finance and the marketing and we have marked with some color about these VLANs. So we can see we have uh, in each building, building A, building B, building C. We have two departments in each building, right? So currently, uh, what is configured in this topology? Uh, we have configured the VLANs, these three VLANs in these three, in these all these switches, 
and uh, they are using this subnet all the PCs are connected with this range 10.1.1.0 24 and this VLAN can reach to the this VLAN okay we do not have any inter VLAN allowed over here these links between these switches are configured with the trunk mode okay so this is current existing configuration we have in the switch now going back to a slide okay so these are the configuration commands we have so we can we will configure these commands only for version 1 and version 2 we cannot do the lab for the version 3 uh, this has to be done on the nexus right so you can see uh, there are nothing like uh, difficult in that it's just that it is very similar we need to create the domain as we are doing in the version 1 and the version 2 and the we have to configure with the version 3 right so we have to specify that and then we need to make that server thus you know the 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 switch which is configured with the server mode has to be in the primary server so now we need to apply this command for the version 3 vtp primary and the vtp password so this is a basic configuration about the version 3 but we are going to see what's going to happen when we configure version 1 and the version 2 how this works and other things and we, we can also try the vtp pruning here but let's just first try creating with the vtp server so there are three commands vtp mode server then the domain and then the password let's do that <coughs> okay so among all these three switches i am going to make building a switch in the server mode right config t vtp domain and let's put this vtp lab right now it has been changed from null to the vtp lab now let's configure in a server mode device is already in server mode by default it is always in a server mode we need to make the changes in the other two switches because by default they are also in server mode we will make them as a client mode right now vtp password it is keep a simple password so this password has to be same when we are doing to make changes for our client mode let's see what the other options we have with ptp so we can set version version 1 and the 2 works in the similar way so we will use by default right the rest we are good show vtp status okay so by default it is version 2 configuration revision number is 12 so we have made the changes about the VLAN almost 12 times or received update from the other as well so it is 12 now maximum supported VLANs locally 255 and number of existing VLAN so on this switch we have number of existing VLAN is 7 it is in a server mode we can see the VTP domain name. It is a VTP lab. Pruning is disabled. Version 2 mode disabled. Trap disabled. Okay. We are good. We have configured this with this. Show VLAN. Let's see how many VLANs we have. We have one default VLAN, HR VLAN, marketing VLAN, and these are the by default VLAN. So in total, these are seven VLANs we have on the switch. Right. Now let's configure other switches in the client mode enable 
config t vtp domain this vtp lab okay the server mode it already replicated this now let's see the change it to the client mode vtp mode client it is set up in the client mode now let's see if we can take the password okay now configure the password in the client mode vtp lab all right so these three commands we have done for the client now let's verify it vtp status it is in client mode configuration value 12 so they have uh, similar values maximum uh, vlan existing vlan is 7 and client mode so it is good show vlan okay Let's also configure this in a client mode. VTP domain. Let's first check two things. Show VTP status. 12 existing VLAN 7. It is in server mode. Domain is already replicated here. VTP lab. Now, geez, now we just need to put in a client mode and password client mode password setting up to the password show vtp status it is in client mode now show vtp password so the vtp password is a password so we can we can find out the password for the vtp by applying this command now we what we have done we have configured show if you notice that earlier earlier these switches were having finance vlan and the marketing vlan this switch was having the marketing vlan and the hr vlan now all these three switches are having the vlan which we have in the building a switch so we we, we can see it's just a two vlan hr vlan and the finance vlan in all these two switches as well now let's modify something let's let me show you once again for the switch c show vlan we can see only two vlan vlan 10 and the 30 okay now let's create one more vlan here config t vlan 50 name test let's check it show vtp status configuration revision number is changed because we have made changes in the vlan earlier it was 12 now it is 14 existing vlan made to now it's showing us to 8 so that means one is increased let's see in the other switches that if we have vlan 50 as a test or not show vlan yep it is here we can see the test vlan 50 all right show vtp status configuration revision number is changed to the 14 yes and we can see the eight vlans good now check into this show vlan yep 
VLAN 50 is present here. Show VTP status, revision number 14, and number of VLANs 8. We are good. All right. So we understood if we make any changes in the server VLAN, will be replicated to all the client modes. Let's try to create VLAN here, right? VLAN, I suppose 80. VTP VLAN configuration not allowed when the device is in client mode. So we can see the warning from the switch itself, not allowing us to create any VLAN in the client mode. Good. Now, I cannot make any changes in this in the client mode, but I want to make any changes and I don't want to affect anyone. So I am going to make change and making it into a transparent mode. Let's do that. Config T. VTP mode. Transparent. Okay. Let's check. Okay. Am I and can I able to create the VLAN now? VLAN 80. Yep. I am able to go to the next test one. All right. Show VLAN. Okay. We can see the VLAN 80 over here on the building C. So this is in a transparent mode, is in a client mode, and this is in a server mode. Let's see if uh, we can see something here about the VLAN 80. No, transparent mode has not forwarded anything about the VLAN, its own database. Now let's check VTP status. Yeah, everything is same. Okay, no one is informed about the changes made in the transparent VLAN. Let's also check here, show VLAN, any change in server mode, no, all right, show VTP status, no changes, all right, let's run the last command in the building C, switch, show VTP status, hmm. one thing to be noticed, now configuration revision number is zero, right, because it does not bother to transfer to to forward any message to be uh, to bother about any changes made in the near uh, to the peer switches or not because I am creating my own database I don't bother about the other database even I don't give a damn that I forward my VLAN database to the other so that's why the configuration division number is zero in case of transport mode all right so now we understood how the VTP works in terms of server mode, in terms of client mode, in terms of transparent mode, right? All right. All right, let's understand the VTP pruning. So currently, if we compare these two switches, we can see there is a common department here which is a finance department. So uh, we have one PC over here and two PC over here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove this PC. So that means we don't have anything connected in this VLAN. Now I, sh I don't want to receive the information being sent on VLAN 20, which is a finance VLAN, right? So I will configure the VTP pruning on the this trunk port FA0 slash 4 on the switch A. Let's do that. You can see the interfaces down because I have removed the PC. Config T interface fast ethernet 0 slash 4 this is a trunk port this is a link connecting both the switches i am going to make the switch uh, make the changes in the switch where i don't want to receive any packet from finance finance vlan right config t 
switch port trunk and pruning this headache is the pruning is not allowed oh okay all right that means Cisco packet tracer is not supporting the feature of pruning in the interface mm, that's why we cannot test this feature as well all right so guys we understood how the vtp works all these three modes of the vtp we know the command to see to enable the vtp pruning so switch port trunk pruning and then we can uh, use the vlans that we don't want to receive any traffic on that particular switch so we can use this command for that vtp version 3 we cannot test but these are the commands you can note down and test on your own right and these we have we have already done this lab we have verified these commands show vlan show uh, the supports in the annex OS. we have verified this we, we let's try these two commands as well show vtp devices and show vtp counter right show vtp devices all right does not support in this show vtp counter supports so you can see in the show vtp counters it gives stats about the vtp that the vtp summary advertisement received packet 10 subset advertisement received packet 6 advertisement request packet 3 how many we have received these three message how many we have transmitted this message okay and that means it gives information about these three message exchange we are doing between the switches so it gives information about those vdp show vdp counters so i think we are good with this so we have completed our vtp we have done our lab we have seen the configuration commands we have seen how to verify the configuration and it's all good okay so thank you guys if you have any questions please put that in the comment and uh, if you need anything like uh, if you need this slide from me so please uh, uh, you you know post your email id in the comment section so i'll try to provide you that right thank you guys have a good day